I say the name John Eberhardt, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, John is a, he's a man of conviction. He's a man, he's a guy that has been killing bucks in a place where no other person kills bucks of that caliber. And he's been doing it a long time. I think uh, I've been fortunate enough to know John now for a few years. And I think a lot of times people listen to him or watch his interviews and they think of this um, overly confident, almost cocky individual but I can say that John's probably one of the most genuine, um, outgoing guys in the industry who just wants to help people become better hunters. When I think of John, I'm instantly drawn to saddle hunting because John Eberhardt is the godfather of saddle hunting. Well, I edit the podcast here, so I get to hear every single week. I got 30 bucks in the Michigan record book. Everyone but one has had at least one previous wound on his body. Some had as many as four. <laughs> Trail Cam Radio from the guys at Exodus. Many say killing trophy bucks in Michigan on a consistent basis is damn near unfathomable. Whether it's the excuse of insane hunting pressure or the lack of quality animals, hunters often point the finger towards some outside set of circumstances. They're just a different animal up here. 400,000 bow hunters in Michigan. Due to that mindset, when people think of John Eberhardt, they think of a deer hunter who has done and still does the impossible. I've got 30 bucks in the Michigan record book, and of those 30 bucks, everyone but one has had at least one previous wound on his body. Some had as many as four. So what makes John different than most other Michigan hunters? What does he do different? Does it just boil down to having access to better properties? Maybe he's just the luckiest whitetail hunter on earth. Certainly, he must be cheating the system to achieve such consistent success when all the odds are against him. Over the last several years, because of Exodus, I've personally had the opportunity to talk and get to know John. And I can tell you, anyone who thinks he's just lucky or he's built his whitetail resume on anything but knowledge, hard work, fortitude and thinking outside the box has it all wrong. Over half of the bucks that I've shot that are in the make the record book were shot at scrapes. Um, it might have been at a destination a fruit tree like an apple tree or it might have been at a white oak or a red oak but there were scrapes underneath. When folks talk of John Eberhardt there's usually no gray area. It seems as though people think he either walks on water where they mistakenly take his confidence as self-bloated arrogance. Spending some time with John, I personally know he's one of the most genuine guys in the industry. Is he confident? Absolutely. Is he arrogant? Not even close. Similar to the brand culture here at Exodus, John genuinely cares about helping others. And he's been on that mission for years. Okay, I just finished a morning hunt out of this white oak here, right next to this river. and. Uh... Basically, on my entry, I came through the swamp here because nothing's in the swamp, obviously, before daylight. But now with my exit, I have to go across the river and out through that open field. In 2003, John and his son Chris published Bowhunting Pressured Whitetails. As the title reflects, this book breaks down John's approach to hunting whitetails in highly pressured areas with the goal of leaving minimal human footprints. John and Chris share their approach to scouting, prepping hunting locations, how to read deer sign to find the most productive places to hunt, and like all things Eberhardt, scent control. Over the last 18 years, I have paid zero, absolutely zero attention to wind direction. I don't use scents. I don't use any scents whatsoever. I don't use cover scents. I never use sex scents. I don't use any of that stuff. I want my, I want my locations to work on the merits I chose it for. In 2005, the father-son duo published a second book, Precision Bow Hunting. This publication shares the Eberhardt year-around approach to whitetails, postseason scouting, off-season training, and planning on top of all the other common whitetail topics. Uh, but the only other thing, I'm pretty proud of the fact that there isn't anybody else in the country 
that has got 50 record book bucks from public and knock on doors for free permission properties. 31 Nobody. from Michigan. 31 Michigan out of 19 state. out of state, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And, the, and the ones from Michigan came off uh, – 19 different properties so i'm not like hunting a spectacular piece of public or knock on doors property you know it's a lot of properties i've probably set up and hunted over 200 different properties in my hunting because i'm always losing and gaining new permission you know this year i only have two two permission spots the rest is public but Mm -hmm. um it's just it's just a different game doing it that way on top of the books john also has informative and instructional dvds he holds scouting workshops and whitetail seminars. He speaks on podcasts. He writes or has written for a various multitude of publications. And as of last year, he now has his own YouTube channel, which is linked in this video's description. I've been getting a lot of requests to do YouTube videos, uh, instructional bow hunting, saddle hunting, um, scent lock stuff, scent control. Uh, so uh, along with my son, Joe, and John, uh, we're going to start doing that. With almost 60 years of bow hunting experience to reflect on, let's take a look at John's whitetail resume. How about 50 Pope and Young Bucks in a book? 31 coming from the state of Michigan. He has so many whitetail mounts, he has to keep them at a local sporting goods store. Inside John's collection, he holds the former Michigan State record book buck killed in 1981. So this one here is, was the state record for five years. Uh, this one was, that was 1981, this one was 1983, and then that real wide one, uh, that one was from Missouri and that was in 2004. And maybe one of the most impressive things on John's resume is he does all of his hunting on knock on door, free permission ground, or public access pieces. John is proud to say he has never paid a dime for access. And with so many record book bucks, it's impossible to touch on all of them. But in John's Whitetail Cribs episode, he talks and shares the stories around each and every one. But anyway, I shot that one uh, in the morning, about 8.15 on October 1st, and that's a 154. Over the last six years, I've been lucky enough to travel around and talk with the top 1% of whitetail hunters in North America. Without coincidence, They have a few things in common. Number one, they have extreme confidence and conviction in not only themselves, but also their methods. I know you use a tree saddle. Mm Mm-hmm. Is that typically all you're using? That's all I ever use. You don't use a stand at all? I would, that's archaic. I would never even consider hunting out of a tree stand. Number two, at almost a manic level, they pay attention to the details. We always do that. Yeah. We always look at stuff out there because when we're out there, there's so little transition security cover. Everything is very repetitive. The scrape areas are always in the same spot. The pinch points are obviously in the same spots. Number three, they are all extremely organized. Uh, All these bags here are airtight. The totes are all airtight. And as you can see, there's some over here. Number four, they spend time honing their craft. All my, all my location preparation and all my scouting is done by the end of April. I don't do anything in the summer. I don't do anything preseason. Since the 80s, John has been using a tree saddle in place of tree stands to hunt whitetails elevated off the ground. Over the last four decades, John has honed his saddle setup and today is hands down the most renowned saddle hunter on the planet. He preaches a very specific set of fundamentals that many of us here at Exodus who are running tree saddles have adopted. I built a ESS for functionality and for killing and comfort. It has nothing to do with cosmetics. I could care less about what a deer thinks about what this thing looks like or people. It's about killing stuff. One of the more controversial items in John's arsenal is his approach to scent control. Uh, about 17 years ago, but actually about 20 years ago, I bought a scent lock suit, saved my money. Uh, had nothing to do with scent lock whatsoever, but I knew I knew about activated carbon. And I saved my money and I, I bought a scent lock suit and it uh, took me about three years to learn how to take care of it and what to use in conjunction with it. And it got to the point, the last 17 years, I haven't paid any attention to wind. I just never get winded. Bring up carbon suits, scent lock, or any other word related to activated carbon and prepare to get a very scientific lecture. Having stats, 
material properties, and legal information on the tip of his tongue, John makes one of the strongest arguments for the use of activated carbon inside his scent control regimen. For John, scent control is much more than just wearing a pair of pants and jacket lined with activated carbon. I would never, ever wear this hat with a jacket and a pant and say, okay, my scent lock regimen's okay. It's storage, how and where to get dressed, covering all exposed skin, backpacks, gloves, face masks. The list is long and the details are specific. And there's simply too much info to cover in this video, but luckily, John has plenty of info out there for anyone interested. And we simply could not do this video and talk about John Eberhardt without mention of the wagon of death, or known to any normal passerby as a simple soccer mom minivan. That's right, you heard that correctly. Laugh if you want. John's hunting vehicle of choice isn't some jacked up four wheel drive truck. It's a minivan. Inside, John carries his airtight totes, his gear, and follows his pre-hunt routine to a T. Buzzing around in a minivan is anything but alpha male or sexy, but it is discreet and damn efficient, making John Eberhardt one of the best whitetail hunters on the planet.